Hey, what's going on, you guys? My name is The Raptor, and welcome back to Who'd Win and Why. And this time we got Batman Beyond, the Batman of the future, going up against Robocop. Now, both of these characters have technology that allow them to power through fights, but which one of the two would actually win in a battle to the death? Which one has the better weapons, armor, and skills to win in this fight? Well, I'm here to give my opinion on the matter. So, Who'd Win and Why? Let's find out! So first I'm going to be talking about Batman Beyond. Now obviously Batman Beyond was in another fight that I did um, back then. I think it was like season 4. Yeah, it was season 4, um, which was Spider-Man 299 versus Batman Beyond. But chances are you didn't see that. Maybe you have. Who knows? I don't know who's watching this. Um, I'm just going to go over everything again, or at least as much as I can remember. Um, so yes, this is obviously not Bruce Wayne. This is Terry McGinnis. This is the Batman, as I said, the Batman of the future. And it's not into like the too distant future, because Bruce Wayne is still alive. But it's far enough that he he cannot operate as Batman anymore. Um, so Terry McGinnis himself is actually at peak physical condition. He is only a teenager, so he's not going to be like as strong as some like a man at peak physical condition. But he's still pretty strong and fast, and and has a lot of stamina and durability and everything like that. Um, you know, for a regular teenager, um, the suit, the bat suit itself, was originally designed like it was originally worn by Bruce Wayne as he got older, I believe, to compensate for his um, for his aging and you know to help him actually get strength back, you know, and, like, actually allow him to keep operating as Batman. However, eventually he got too old, and it was passed down to Terry McGinnis, and this means that Terry McGinnis, when he puts on the suit, actually had, like, his physical stats are actually, mul like, multiplied by 10, which means he has 10 times the strength, speed, endurance, and everything like that, you know, reflexes of a regular person. And remember, this is Terry McGinnis, meaning that, like, it's actually multiplying the 10 times by the peak physical condition stats. So that, this just goes to show that he is, like, significantly stronger than Batman Bruce Wayne ever was, and probably faster and has more endurance. You, you guys get what I'm saying. Um, when it comes to how smart he is, however, um, you know, he obviously is not Bruce Wayne. He's not anywhere near, near Bruce Wayne's level of intellect. Um, and also when it comes to skill, like he's not the best strategist either. You know, he's more of a brawler than a detective. He's not really much of a detective at all. Um, and when it comes to skill, you know, like martial arts and everything like that, he is by far, you know, of the whole Batman family, including Batman, Robin, Batgirl, everyone like that he's by far the least trained and the least skilled however because he's living in the future he's argue he arguably has better tech than any of the other batman family you know like more than batman robin batgirl anyone like that like he has a lot of good tech and the bat suit is included with that so what exactly does he have well i'm glad you asked first of all he um you know when it comes to strength you know like i said it's multiplied by like um like, like the physical stats, I've already said, you know, multiplied by, um, by 10, but if he wants to go even faster, you know, when it comes to speed, um, he has his flight thrusters, which allow him to fly up to speeds of Mach 3, and just to put that into perspective, Mach 1, which is the speed of sound, is 761 miles per hour, that's well over 10 times the speed of, like, a car on the highway, and then we're multiplying that by 3, that's really fast, um, so that, but that's just his flight thrusters, he has a lot of other things with him, um, first of all, the durability of the suit itself, is crazy. It's able to like casually deflect gunfire, and he's also able to fall off skyscrapers, um, and you know get right back up. And he's also able to like withstand explosions, you know, like explosions in his face, which is very durable. His suit is extremely durable, as you can tell. Um, and he does have also some strength feats and everything like that. But I've already gone over all of his physical stats. Um, what else does he have? So he has been said to have at least most of Batman's um, gadgets, you know, in his utility belt, at least most of them, and even more. Um, he obviously, like, has batarangs, he has, like, electric and explosive batarangs and other different types of batarangs, like, his own kind of version of the batarangs, they're essentially the same thing, um, and he also has, um, you know, like, flashbangs and different grenades and, you know, just the classic stuff that Batman has at least, um, I'm actually not sure if he has a grappling hook, he really wouldn't need one, um, but, because, you know, he can fly, but, you know, he does have a lot of the weapons that Batman has, and obviously I'm not gonna be able to list all of them just because, you know, I feel it's just gonna, like, waste some time, I'm gonna more so talk about the stuff that he has that Batman does not have. Um, so first of all, his suit is actually um, able, I believe, like able to like produce electricity around him. Along with being durable, it's also able to like it's like it has like some sort of like electrical network inside, which actually allows him to like shock any enemies that are like touching him or like grabbing him or anything like that. Um, and you know, it's it's very like he's very electrically amplified, not to like to the point of like a very electrical person such as like Electro or Zax, um, but you know, he's still. Um, 
he, he still has a lot of electricity, I guess, you know, in order for him to do significant damage. Um, what else does he have? He also has wrist mounted lasers. Um, you know, like he, I, I be, like just, just like Batman when he has like his pocket laser or like his small laser, I'm assuming this is more so just for, you know, actually getting through places like cutting through metal and like getting through like a door or something like that. But he certainly has them. They're right on his wrists and he's able to use them if he wants to. Um, another thing about him is that he also has a cloaking device, which allows him to become completely invisible. Um, I don't believe it actually makes him silent. It might, but the point is, um, you know, he, uh, he doesn't really need to practice stealth tactics like Batman did, you know, when he has a suit that can actually turn him invisible whenever he wants to. And that's really cool. Um, you know, when it comes, and those are the main things I believe that Batman Beyond has that, um, that Batman doesn't have. Just to go over everything again, you know, his suit is far more durable. He's obviously much stronger and faster and, you know, everything physically than Batman ever was. Um, and he's able to, like, um, cloak himself and, you know, like, everything like that. And he has, like, the, the lasers. The lasers, I believe, are very powerful because they haven't said to cut through metal before, which is impressive. Um, so, yeah, those are the main differences between Batman Beyond and Batman. And just going over the weaknesses again, um, he is, you know, he is a good brawler, but he's not really much of a strategist or a detective. He doesn't have the same um, power, like, a, he doesn't have the same brain power or whatever you want to call it, like, the same level of intellect that Batman has. Definitely not anywhere near that point. Um, but, you know, he is, like, a brawler. He is, you know, a, a very good fighter. And, again, he's not as skilled, but he has the technology that more than makes up for it. So, needless to say, you do not want to get in a fight with this version of Batman. Okay, so now let's move on to Robocop. Now, Robocop is a cyborg, however, it's kind of a bit more complicated than that. He's 99% artificial. The 1%, I believe, just comes from the human brain. That's the only... So he still has all of, um, you know, like, Alex Murphy, I believe that's his name, um, before, like, the human version of him before he became Robocop. Um, you know, he has all of his memories and all of his, like, intellect and everything like that, um, but that's the only human part of him that he actually has. You know, even his face I believe is like just made um, I, I, I might be wrong about that I don't think I am but I believe even his face is like artificial like artificial skin um, so yeah he is he's a cyborg and he does want to like regain his humanity but it is hard for him to do that essentially um, when it comes to how strong and durable he is he's strong enough this guy is actually really freaking strong he's strong enough to like lift a 10 ton door and he's also strong enough to like um, like stop and reverse a 3000 PSI that's pounds per square inch hydraulic press with his bare hands you know stopping it is one thing but actually reversing it making it go the other way i'm assuming that's some impressive strength right there like an impressive strength level um when it comes to durability and endurance more so durability um he, this guy, just like Batman Beyond, is extremely durable. Um, he ha apparently, he's apparently able to survive a bazooka and other explosions. He's been said to have a durability of a tank. I don't want to, like, figure out how much a tank has because I don't want to, like, go just based off of that because that might just be an expression. Um, but the point is he's able to survive explosions, falls from skyscrapers, and also bullets and bazookas and a ton of other stuff. Um, really, and even, like, um, plasma blasts as well. He's able to survive those. Um, so, yeah, he's very durable. Like, there haven't been that many times where his suit is actually like like someone's actually been able to like chop off his arm or anything like that there hasn't been a lot of instances where that's happened he is extremely durable and generally he does fight a lot of robots that are or like maybe cyborgs i don't really know that are more powerful than him that are stronger and he's able to take those blows so he is extremely durable um when it comes to his speed my goodness, this is already the biggest weakness that he has. Like, on foot, he is extremely slow. Like, if you've seen any of the older Robocop movies, he's not moving all that fast. And if he's trying to, like, actually catch bad guys, you know, every, like, when he's trying... Because he, he's a police officer still, you know, he's still trying to, like, uphold the law and everything like that. Um, so if he's like, just, like, walking like that, you know, if a criminal is fast enough, or even if they're not fast really at all, they're going to be able to get away from him. Um, however, he does have a jetpack, like a flight pack or something like that, um, basically a jet pack, um, that does allow him to fly much faster than he ever could on the ground. Um, however, even though he's not that fast when it comes to running on the ground or really walking at all, um, his reef, and he's not that agile either, that's, that's pretty clear, he's very bulky, um, his reflexes, however, and this is partially due to his targeting system that makes him a great marksman, but he has a very well-advanced targeting system and reflexes that allow him to not only catch bullets, but also shoot bullets out of the air with other bullets, and if, I'm not sure if any of you guys remember, um, from this movie, I, I forget which movie it was from, which Robocop movie, 
Uh, have there been more? I think so. Um, but he was like, I believe there was this criminal that had like a baby or something with him. And then he was able to actually like bounce, like ricochet a bullet off of, off of a wall and like hit the bad guy. So his targeting system and his reflexes are really good if they allow him to do something like that. Um, so yeah, so even though he's not that fast, his reflexes are really good thanks to his targeting system and just his, you know, his reflexes. Um, and that does make him a better marksman than really most, than really any other people. He's like master of the impossible possible, essentially. Um, when it comes to actually what he has, now this guy has a lot of stuff. He has his Auto 9 pistol, I think that's what you call it, and that, like, is in one of his legs, um, and, you know, I believe it's one of the most powerful pistols in his own world, um, and it has, like, I mean, maybe, like, 50 shots or something. It has a lot of shots in it, I know that for sure, um, and, you know, he's just, that's, I think that's the thing he generally, like, resorts to at the beginning of a fight, um, however, it's far from the most powerful thing he has with him. Um, in his other leg, he has these ordnance grenades, um, and they're able to have, like, different levels, like, level 1 to 10, about how explosive he really wants to get. And to put that into perspective of how powerful these things actually are, a level 3 ordnance grenade is able to easily bust through, like, a steel door, uh, like, like some sort of door that's supposed to, like, block out pretty much everything. So, imagine what level 10 is gonna be able to do. He might not want to resort to level 10 immediately, but even so, that just proves that these ordnance grenades that he's keeping in his leg, you know, and he does have quite a few of them, um, they're, they're very powerful, depending on how far he sets them. Um, so, but that's only, like, two of the things he has. Um, he has a lot more. He has his weapon arm, which I believe, like, it's, like, he can take off his arm and then, like, replace it with different, um, things. You know, he has, I believe, like, one of them is a machine gun, another one is, like, a flamethrower, another one is, uh, what's another one? I believe, like, smart missiles, which are actually used, like, to destroy tanks, or just, like, very durable things, maybe just cars, I believe tanks, um, but, you know, they're, like, smart missiles that are designed to destroy, like, very tough things, so needless to say that he, like, he has a lot of destructive capability with him, he's very, like, very powerful with the different weapons that he has, not so with strength, even though he is pretty strong, but his biggest, like, destructive, um, his biggest destructive capabilities are with his weapons that he uses. He also, I believe, has some sort of assault cannon, which I believe he can, like, stand up and then, like, um, use, which are also very powerful, I believe, like, as Boomstick put it in, um, in Terminator vs. Robocop, like, he fires it, and then there's no more anything. Um, obviously, that, that can't go for everything, but, you know, it is still extremely tough. You know, it's extremely powerful. Um, he, I believe he also has his terminal strip, which is something, which is something I believe, like, it's like a, it's like that little knife or shiv thing that comes out of his, um, hand or his fist. It's supposed to be used for, like, collecting data, but can also be used as, like, a jabbing weapon, like, a stabbing weapon, you know, if, as Boomstick puts it, like, ripping out throats, which he certainly can, assuming, like, someone's not, like, heavily armored. Um, but yeah, that's something that can, like, cut through, you know, human skin very easily. Um, I believe he also, like, on the bottom of his feet, he has, like, things that, I forget exactly what they're called, but they're things that, like, drill into the ground that actually allow him to, like, stop moving vehicles, or if he wants to, like, stand his ground if someone's, like, tossing him around or something like that, he certainly can do that. Of course, he can't really walk, but, you know, if he just really wants to stand his ground, he's going to be able to. Um, so that's a lot of what Robocop is capable of. He's extremely strong physically, um, and he's extremely durable. And he does have, like, a targeting system. And, it, like, I, yeah, and that, did, you know, that obviously, um, you know, helps him when it comes to, like, speed with um, reflexes. When it comes to just regular speed, you know, like, running speed or walking speed, he's not that fast at all. And if he's really trying to get, like, an edge on someone in speed, he'd probably have to resort to his flight pack. But he does have a lot of armor, like, not, not armor, weapons with him that allow him to keep up and, you know, like, actually, like, blow up people, you know, and everything like that. You know, some people might be thinking, why doesn't he use these all the time? Well, remember, the main part of this is to uphold the law. And even though he has killed criminals before, you know, his main thing is not to destroy the other buildings or anything like that. His main focus is to catch criminals and maybe kill them. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that's basically what Robocop's all about. He's extremely strong, extremely durable, not that fast, but does have a lot of weapons, you know, like ordnance grenades and different guns, like machine guns and flamethrowers to make up for it. So, trying to figure out who would win this fight. Um, originally, when I first heard this fight, I really didn't know um, too much, like, all too much about either character. I know, obviously, like, I had to learn some stuff about Batman Beyond for the Spider-Man 2099 versus Batman Beyond fight, but I didn't really, like, I couldn't, re I didn't remember a lot of stuff, um, even though he is a character that I am quite fond of. Um, but the point is, I didn't really remember all that much stuff, so I didn't really know, like, who's gonna win this fight, you know? Um, after going through everything, um, I realized that, you know, 
th these two characters do have significant advantages over the other. Um, let me just go over some right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna mix it up a bit. I'm gonna go over some advantages right now. Um, who has the strength advantage? Definitely Robocop. Um, you know, Robocop is able to hold up a 10 ton steel door and is able to like reverse 3,000 pounds per square inch hydraulic press with his bare hands and then he was he seemed to be struggling but not all too much um which means he could pro possibly like push back even more um when it comes to batman beyond i'm gonna be highballing his strength right here um obviously you know like a person who's that peak physical condition who's a teenager is not gonna be the same as a person who's a man but highballing it let's say that he is at batman's level of strength you know bench pressing 1000 pounds let's just say that right now that he's bench that he can bench press 1000 pounds multiplying that by 10 obviously means that his strength level means that he can bench press 10,000 pounds, which is five tons. And that's pretty impressive. But remember, that's the highest I believe that he can get. You know, like he's clearly, clearly by himself without the suit cannot, um, you know, bench press 1,000 pounds. So five tons is highballing it probably by quite a bit. Um, so by that point, we can, we can pretty much judge that Robocop. I know that lifting is not the same as bench pressing, um, but because we're highballing it, it's pretty clear to say that Robocop is, is at least twice as strong as Batman Beyond. And, you know, twice as strong as someone, people don't really understand that that is a big deal, you know, if you're twice as strong as someone. Um, so yeah, you know, when it comes to the strength advantage, Robocop obviously has that. When it comes to the speed advantage, there's no question about that. Batman Beyond obviously has the speed advantage. On foot, Batman Beyond can't obviously, obviously he can't move at like the speed of sound, but he is pretty fast and he is pretty agile. Um, you know, he has 10 times the agility and 10 times the speed. And Robocop, even though he does have good reflexes, um, he's not that fast in general. When it comes like to um, in the air, you know, obviously Batman Beyond can go to like Mach 3, and even though um, Robocop's flight pack can allow him to go fast, um, it is, I believe it's not up to the level of Mach 3. So the speed advantage definitely goes to Batman Beyond. Um, when it comes to the like um, intelligence and experience advantage, I'd probably have to give a slight edge to Robocop here, simply because, you know, like, um, Terry just likes to go in head first. Um, he doesn't really like, like, he doesn't like to strategize or anything like that. Whereas Robocop in like his, um, in his helmet, he might be able to like scan his opponent or something. I don't know. And maybe like figure out what he has. The point is, you know, like he, he, he does seem to be smarter. He likes to seem to take a take a, a more of a tactical approach when fighting more powerful enemies. Um, you know, and that's what would really help him in this fight. And when it comes to experience, as I've said, you know, some people may be thinking, how does he get the experience advantage? You know, like he fights regular people, and he does, but he also fights robots which are leagues above him. And you know, like I believe, like once in like a TV show or something, he like hopped into like the stomach of like a big monster and killed it from the inside. He's taking on people that are out of his league. Or, like, that are higher than him, I guess is what I should be saying. And, you know, then we have Batman Beyond, who's still fighting people, you know, but they don't have the tech that he has or anything like that. Um, so I probably have to give a slight intelligence and slight experience advantage to Robocop. When it comes to versatility, Robocop is obviously very versatile, but I, but I didn't mention everything that Batman Beyond has, and I probably didn't mention everything that Robocop has either. I'm just mentioning, like, the main stuff. But the point is, Batman Beyond has, like, over 30 different gadgets that he can use at any time. Um, so definitely, I'd have to give the versatility advantage to Batman Beyond. However, the reason why I'm not saying the answer yet for who I believe would win is because it's like, here's basically what I'm saying. These two characters are extremely durable, and they're going to be able to withstand at least most of what the other person can throw at them. That's how durable these guys are. So really, in this fight, it really only comes down to two different things, which is um, you know, destructive capability and durability. Which one wins in those categories and do, like, can Batman Beyond actually get through Robocop and can Robocop actually, like, puncture Batman Beyond, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, strength and versatility, you know, those are other, um, advantages that, like, each of them could have, but really, if they, if they're not getting through those suits, there's nothing, like, it doesn't matter how strong Robocop is, you know, if his weapons can't get through Batman Beyond, he's not gonna be able to kill him, and vice versa with Batman Beyond going up against Robocop. Um, so yeah. Another thing I want to say about this explanation is that this is actually a lot more opinion-based than anything else. And when I say that, I mean, like, I'm basically hypothesizing on what I believe the capabilities of their weapons are. Like, I'm not able to actually say, like, oh, this can do this, so, you know, it's not going to, so it's not going to be able to get through this guy. You know, I, I'm not going to be able to say that because I don't know the exact capabilities. So basically, I'm going to have to, like, make some theories about what I personally believe would be able to work and what wouldn't. And that's why I'm trying to enforce this again. This is my opinion. This is very opinionated. And even though I am using facts, you know, it's, I'm not going to be 100% correct with anything. Um, so, 
Who do I believe would win this fight? Some of you may disagree with me on this, but I'm going to give this win to RoboCop. Now, some of you may be wondering, and some of you may have questions. I'm going to see if I can, like, answer everything that I possibly can. Um, let me just, let me just f get through this. So, I'm going to go on with the easier thing and say why I do not believe Batman Beyond would be able to get through RoboCop. Now, there are two things that could possibly, that I'm sure that, like, some people would be thinking that, that it could possibly do to, to get through RoboCop. One, he could, like, electrocute him with, you know, some of his, uh, like, e like I pr he probably has an EMP or something like that. You know, an EMP or his electric battery or even like his whole electrical body suit and the second thing is probably his wrist mounted lasers because if they can cut through metal you know they're going to be able to um to maybe cut through him and you know they're probably the most destructive thing in his arsenal or at least they're going to be more they're going to be better off trying to cut through um robocop than his explosives because you know robocop has tanked pretty big explosions before you know like it exploded in his face and he was fine um however so first let me talk about the electric stuff so first of all um, RoboCop has been shown to be immune, not, not immune, but more resistant to electrical, um, things than, than others, you know, like tasers, he, like, barely any effect has been used on him, like, barely any, there's been barely any effect on him when a taser has been used, and he's just able to, like, take it off and, like, completely destroy the bad guy, um, however, you know, some people may be thinking, well, you know, um, even, like, even so, you know, he would be able to, like, Batman Beyond would be able to use his electrical batarangs, or he'd be able to use, like, his whole suit or just an EMP or something like that, well, first of all, for the batarangs, for the, yeah, first of all, talking about the batarangs, um, you know, Robocop, remember, his reflexes are so good that he's able to shoot bullets out of the air with other bullets and you know how small those things are so i believe i'm i'm more than confident that robocop would be able to use his targeting system and just shoot all of batman beyond's electrical weapons out of the air and even if he did was able to use an emp remember he has been shown to be pretty resistant to electrical attacks before in fact the only thing that i believe the only electrical attack or the only electrical thing that's actually been able to show any effect on him was i believe like he like bumped into like an electrical generator or something or got knocked in do it and he had to reboot himself which took about a minute so first of all that's that already shows that he's able to reboot himself and it doesn't mean that he's going to be like he's he's going to be dead from an electrical device he's going to be able to reboot himself and even though it does take a minute you know batman beyond still doesn't like he's still not going to be able to get through him he's not going to be able to cut through him um it doesn't matter how many how much how versatile he is if he's not going to be able to get through robocop he's not going to be able to He's not going to be able to kill him. He's not going to be able to do anything because he's not able to, like, get through his um, titanium, you know, like, whatever suit. And I think it's actually going to be more, more strong than that because of what it's been able to survive. Um, but some of you are probably thinking, well, what about his electrically charged suit? You know, everything like, like, what about that? Um, well, personally, you know, first of all, Batman Beyond doesn't really use that offensively. He doesn't, like, grab someone and then use it. He doesn't do that a lot. Generally, what he does is if someone's attacking him or, like, grabbing him, then he'd use it and then it would shock them and it would be able able to, um, you know, to, to break free. And if there was anything that would produce the amount of electricity, if there was anything that had a chance of producing the amount of electricity that Robocop injured, you know, with the electrical generator or whatever it was, it would be the electrical network flowing in his suit. Um, but the other thing is just, you know, just, I'm not sure, again, I don't think he'd be able to, I'm not there, yeah, sorry, I don't think he'd be able to just, you know, grab hold of him and then use it, or at least he wouldn't do that, uh, like, generally. Generally, he just likes to stick to, like, fighting, fist fighting, and then he likes to go to his gadgets. And like I said, his gadgets, can easily be shot out of the um, of the air by his Auto Nine, you know, Robocop's Auto Nine. Um, so with elect and and plus, like even just saying that he's gonna that he'd be able to. Um you know, uh, be shorted out by any sort of electricity, you know, even with the whole body suit, that's more of a hypothesis than anything. And just because from what we've seen Robocop survive, I don't believe that Ro that Batman Beyond would be able to use electricity all too much to his advantage in this fight. When it comes to the wrist-mounted lasers, however, this is a different story. You know, obviously Robocop has been shown, like, tanking plasma shots. However, how do plasma shots stack up to laser shots? Well, I tried figuring this out, you know, like, Googling it. However, um, I basically just came across a lot of stuff comparing laser cutting to plasma cutting and even though this probably doesn't directly correlate to um, plasma shots and laser blasts uh, I read I read some stuff anyway and what I found out is that plasma cutting can actually cut through all sorts of metal it can cut through like every metal and laser cutting while it does have its own advantages over plasma cutting it cannot um, and you know it, and even though it doesn't like directly relate to um, plasma shots and laser shots you know if plasma shots aren't able to um, 
to, to break through them. Lasers are at very least comparable to plasma shots. So, you know, if he's able to, like, withstand plasma, I believe he would be able to withstand lasers as well. And even plasma cutting and laser cutting, cutting we've shown that, you know, he's able, that plasma cutting can cut through all sorts of metal. It can cut through any metal. However, laser cutting cannot. And again, it might not be exactly applied the same way here, but my point is, I just, like, those are the two, those, those like, the electrical stuff and the laser stuff, I believe, are the two biggest things that would help Batman be on in this fight. And in my personal opinion, I don't believe that either of them would really work too well. I don't believe that a lot of his electrical stuff would be able to do much harm to Robocop, and his lasers I don't believe would be able to do much either um, if, if he's able to survive plasma shots. Now, this is the harder thing, trying to convince you guys that Robocop would be able to get Bat through Batman Beyond suit. Well, first of all, just comparing the two durabilities of these two characters, I do personally believe that Robocop is more durable, because he seems to survive more um, power, like, he seems to survive hits, and, you know, like, for more powerful characters, like, hit, like, the giant robots or whatever, not, not giant robots, but bigger robots that he has to fight, whereas Batman Beyond seems to be fighting characters more around his strength level, I might be a, a bit wrong about that, but that's just from what, that's from what I've picked up on it, um, and, you know, he's been able to survive a bazooka before, and even though Batman Beyond has, has been able to survive, um, you know, everything, you know, like, explosions, I'm not sure if he'd be able to survive that. Um, maybe he would be able to, I'm not really sure how the bazooka compares, um, but the point is, the ordnance grenades, I personally believe, are the biggest thing that Robocop could use against Batman Beyond. Sure, he has, like, his flamethrower, but the bat suit can survive temperatures up to, like, 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm not sure if his flamethrower would be able to produce heat that hot. Um, and another thing is just that, you know, like, his Auto 9, I don't believe would do much damage either, because he's been able to survive gunfire before, neither would his machine gun. So maybe, I think the biggest things that he would have is his smart missiles, his cannon, and his ordnance grenades. But I'm going to talk about his ordnance grenades, because I believe they're probably the most powerful thing that he has when taking it up to level 10, and yes, I do personally believe that they'd be able to break through Batman Beyond. Like I said, um, but like at level 3, they're able to take out like steel doors, and th and remember, like that means that when, we, when it puts it up to level 10, he's going to be able to take out basically over 3 times the durability of a steel door with ease, and personally, I'm not even sure if Batman Beyond would be able to survive would be able to survive that. Even if he could, you know, I'm not sure if his suit, because his suit is durable, but I believe it's something made of, like, some sort of Kevlar or something like that, and at level 10 ordinance, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to survive that. That, again, this is just my personal opinion. You can argue with me about that if you want. Leave it in the comments below, but that's the way that I see it. Um, and also, you know, just some, so, like... At level 10, I just feel that I would be able to break through him. And even if it wouldn't, you know, his reflexes are fast enough that I feel he would be able to tag him. Um, you know, at least when he's on the ground, um, which is when he would be fighting him more often. You know, because, like, some of you may be thinking, well, what about when he's flying at, like, Mach 3? How is he going to be able to hit him? And while that is true, you know, Batman Beyond's actions cannot keep up with the jet thrusters that are allowing him to, to fly at Mach 3. Unlike someone, like, giving an example, unlike someone with Flash, you can think at the speed that he's running and punch at the speed that he's running. Um, you know... Batman Beyond wouldn't be able to think at Mach 3 and punch at the speed of Mach 3. So when he's actually, like, fighting someone, he's not going to be moving at Mach 3 speeds. Even when he's flying, I'm not even sure if he'd go up all the way to Mach 3. Maybe just, like, Mach 1 or something like that. Maybe not even that. But the point is, when he's fighting, I just feel like, yes, he is agile, but because of Robocop's reflexes, he'd be able to get a few on there. And if one wouldn't work, I feel that maybe, like, two, three, four, I feel that eventually the ordnance grenades would break through Batman Beyond. Generally, it just looks like that Robocop is stronger, um, well, not stronger. He does seem to be more durable, and he seems to have better odds when it comes to actually breaking through Batman Beyond. Again, a lot of this is a hypothesis, and some of you may may like want to argue the other way around, but that's the way that I see it. This is still just opinionated, and while these two characters do have advantages over the over the other, like strength and speed and intellect and versatility, I do personally believe that just because of their durabilities, it really just comes down to who's more destructive and who's more durable. And personally, I just think Robocop is more suited, or at least has a better chance of breaking through Batman Beyond than the other way around. So, in my opinion, the winner is RoboCop. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I know that the conclusion was a lot more opinion based than most of my other um most of my other fights, but regardless, I hope you enjoyed this fight. I thought it was a pretty cool fight, Batman Beyond going up against Robocop. They both have tech, um, but just trying to like compare the tech and like compare the durability and figure out which one would be would win in a fight. And again, this is just my opinion. So you know, you tell me who you think would win in the comments below. If you think Batman Beyond would win and you think that what I said might be wrong, or if you have like another theory, um, you know, maybe why Batman Beyond would win, or maybe why 
maybe why RoboCop would win. You know, tell me in the comments below. I'd really like to hear it. And if you like this episode, please give me a like. Comment down below everything I said before. Um, as I've said many times, you know, for season uh, three, no, so not, not, not season three, uh, season seven for Who and Why. Why did I say season three? Um, you know, I do already have 10 episodes planned. If you do want to give more, I guess that's okay. But again, you know, it's, um, it's, an, un it's an unlikelier chance. Whether you've suggested stuff or not, it's an unlikelier chance that you're going to get in. Um, it's still, like, possible, but, you know. And if you could subscribe to my channel, guys, that would be so great. That would really help me out. I make these videos as fast as possible. Um, and, you know, these are just opinion-based. And this is where you can just, like, um, tell me what you guys think about it. Um, so, you know, like, it's all, like, you guys can say your opinions, too. And, you know, that's what's good about the show. That's what I like about the show. And I'd love to have you guys along for the ride. So, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Your view means everything to me. And next time on Who Win and Why, we got Godzilla going up against the Powerpuff Girls. See you all then.